Hello, my name is Farouk Mid Mansour. And I've been incarcerated for 20 years for a crime that I did not commit. Uh, I'm Harold Andrew Lee Jr. And uh, my wife here is Cynthia M. Lee. Uh, we're Andrew Lee's mother and father. And um, Andrew grew up in this house. I was just realizing how many, you know, how much we don't have, you know, very many photos of Andrew. You know, we got some in his younger, you know, younger years. And, uh, but as an adult, we don't have too much. We spend a lot of time, uh, practices every day after school, taking all his friends home because they didn't have a rise. So through track, football and basketball all three seasons he was like busy and he was good and he was good, and he was good. we played basketball throughout high school together for sure and Andrew was an exceptional athlete probably could have been, ended up in, in the uh, NFL and then this tragedy hit Out the clear blue, I go over to my dad's house. The next thing you know, the police is looking for me, talking about I committed the murder. So not knowing the, that this would be the last days of my my life on the streets, I allowed them to arrest me. I want people to know the truth. I want people to know that I'm innocent of this crime, and I just want my name back. I, I want I want I, I want my name back. They didn't uh, use DNA to prosecute Andrew. They used the eyewitness testimony, and it's shaky all the way around. Uh, I mean, I really thought it was going to be not guilty because the picture alone said it all. This person was clean shaven, short hair, and at the time, Andrew was not that. He's not the right age. He's too young. He's not that thin. He's actually taller, right? He's, he's taller, he's bigger, he's younger, right? So what matches? Black male. That's what you got. They knew that he played football for OSU. And yet the witness description is 155 pounds at six foot. I'm sorry, what, what position, what football player plays for OSU that's 155 and six foot? He should have been eliminated immediately on the basis of the size. That day, he called me and he came over and me and hung out for like two hours, two and a half hours maybe. It was probably around 12-ish in between 12 and 1. Where he was living at at the time versus where I live at and where the crime took place at, there's no way he could have walked. And you know what I mean? Because that's all Drew did was walk. The, the time frame just does not like match. The attorneys were aware that the gun was found on Cameron Cruz, but nobody ever questioned him about it, and he never showed up at the trial. So waiting on them to bring him back. And um, 
they brought the gun back, but they let him. I don't know what happened to him. If you know that um, that you have unknown DNA on the crime scene and he's got the gun, I mean that's a major, you know, ball drop. Come back inconclusive. It came back to where it showed that it wasn't mine. And she, I remember the, the lawyer lady showing me a, a, a packet that had all the X's and Y's, all the little different letters and stuff that's on it. And none of it matched me. Not one single thing matched me. Our, our Y chromosome, which is very specific to males, doesn't match the whole profile. It doesn't match at all. And that's kind of interesting. So we have at least two other people detected on. Swabs you expect would be very closely related to the incident. I mean, I'm looking at lack of evidence. You know, there's no DNA that corroborates him being there. There's no semen evidence. There's nothing on the ligature. There's there's just nothing um, that would connect him to the actual physical assault of her. Wow, there's at least one or two people here and they're definitely not our guy. <laughs> That's a piece of evidence that if a jury would have heard, may have walked your guy out the door. But that's what puzzles me right there. You have that, that quality DNA from that location. It doesn't match him. Why are we here? After being locked up for 20 years and fighting and fighting and fighting, it gets frustrating. You cry a lot. You just go through all types of emotions. Today is a good day. But usually I deal with a lot of depression, just missing out on life, missing out on kids and family events and just going outside, just simple stuff. And here, you hear a lot of stories. You see a lot of people's lives, and you see a lot of people who don't have anything. I'm one of the lucky ones that has a supporting cast. Now, you know, I've really grown up in here, grown up in prison. I'm studying to be an imam or a teacher so I can speak Arabic. You know, I grew up, we grew up somewhat in an Islamic household, but uh, I really converted and took it serious 2010, 2011. It just... It happened naturally and ended up changing my name, get my name changed. You know, I really respect him. You know, I look at the, what he's going through. I say, you know, I look at it as that's his path and he's got time to come out and, and do something good. You know, do something good. I really think he's gonna do that too.